Hey, welcome to our podcast today. How are you doing? Thank you for joining me. And uh, on this, I want to talk about accessing the promises of God. There's some realities that we need to know about this. We we need to be able to live a lo- live above the fray. Everything that's going on in this world, according to Ephesians chapter two verse six, we have been seated in Christ, which according to Ephesians chapter one around 19, 20, 21, all things are under his feet. Everything should be under our feet. We need to be able to do this. Now, I want to start off here in James 4, 7. Uh, this, the latter part of it, it's a, a verse that many people uh, know, or at least this part of it. We kind of tend to ignore this, submit yourself to God part of it, um, which is very critical, but it's not my point today. But it says, resist the devil and he will flee from you. Now, I am not talking today about resisting. I'm talking about the point of, for the verse to say, resist the devil, uh, you should realize that or expect that you're going to be resisted. Satan does not want you to apprehend the promises of God. John 10.10 10 says, the thief comes only to kill, stone, and destroy <clears throat> He doesn't want you to access what God is giving you. Now, we have to stop and think because a lot of us are living below what God has provided. He's stolen from us. He's destroyed things in our lives. Uh, you know, we, we, we can talk about what a great Christian we are, but if we can't lay hold of the promises of God, there is a problem. And if we understand that God is a good God, that he's given us things, that he wants us to be partakers of the things he's given us, and he is willing, not willing, but he loves us so much, he wants us to live in everything that he has. If we're not living in it, it's not because he's stopping it, it's because Satan is is getting um, access into our life to kill, steal, and destroy, and we are not resisting him. So I've talked about it before out of 1 Peter, in fact, yesterday in, in our service uh, from the day of this recording, which you don't know when that is. So I guess it doesn't really matter that yesterday in the service, I read 2 Peter chapter uh, 1. And uh, I went to 1 Peter. Let me go to 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3. According as his, God's divine power has given us all things pertaining unto life and godliness. So, so we start off with the premise, God's already given to us all things. Say that, all things. Everything you need to maintain life, everything you need to walk with God, he's already done it. We know that the answer to the promises of God are yes and amen. Where somebody got this stupid idea of, well, we never know God's will. Yes, we do. His will's written in the Bible. And uh, and he said, the answer to the things I've given to you are yes and amen. I want you to access them. All right, but but notice here what he says. He's given us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue. Now, you there's a system. He's freely given us everything, but there is a system by which we apprehend everything. And this is, I think, where it falls apart. We say things like we're believing, we're having faith, um, we're expecting God to do it, but we're not working the system. You know, if if you're laid off, there's this thing called, uh, I think it's EDD, um, Employment Development Division or something like that. But anyway, unemployment insurance. If you're laid off, you know you have a right to unemployment insurance. But you don't just show up and say, hey, here's my layoff ticket. Start writing me checks. No. There's a system by which you obtain it, and, and you have to go through the system. Um, I don't know why this is so foreign to Christians, uh, because God set up a system, and he's drawing us into himself. He wants us. Remember with the disciples, he says he ordained them to be with him. God wants us to be with him. Now, this, this ugly word, sin, three-letter word, separation from God, things that we do is sin. We've got to get sin out of our lives. Nobody wants to preach on sin, but God has given us all things that pertain to to life, but it's through the knowledge of him. 
Well, you've got to know in this day and age that we live in, you know, churches are trying to make homosexuality okay. It's not okay with God. I don't care what you feel about it. I don't care. God clearly lined out that a man is not to be with a man and a woman is not to be with a woman. Clear as, clear as day. It's not hard. Adultery. In our culture today, you've got people who are professing to be Christians living together. Um, fornication. I guess that would fall under the classification of fornication, not adultery. But uh, uh, people are living together, expecting to go to heaven. Uh, the Bible says these people are not going to be in heaven. And uh, uh, it's sin. It separates us from God. Now, we, we cannot like what God said. There's some things I don't like. But God said it, so we align to it. There, we can we can fight God, but I wouldn't fight God because you're not going to walk in what God has provided. Fight the devil who doesn't want you. He's the one that makes sin look abnormal and makes, or, or saying it backwards, he's the one that makes righteousness look weird and, and abnormal and sin to look normal. And, and we've bought into it because it's cultural. Uh, I tell you what, cultural is probably one of the uh, the biggest things that we've got to deal with. Uh, even though it's okay in our cultural system, it doesn't make it okay with God. <clears throat> and we've got to align ourselves with God. Now, <clears throat> in doing this, God said, hey, everything that I provided for you, I want you to have it. I want you to walk in it. But you can't do it. You know, people talk about love and grace. Uh, grace does not permit you to live however you want to live. Grace empowers you to do what God said to do. And we have this, this mindset that it's okay to live according to our thoughts. To And, and we, we, well, God made me this way. Well, no, he didn't. He made you in his image to be pure and holy and righteous. And this fallen world has, has perverted us. And so we have to come to this place where, where we believe God's word over what we believe natural circumstances. So let's go to uh, 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 12. Um, okay, well, actually, talking about what I'm talking about, let's start reading at verse 11. But thou, O man of God, flee these things. Huh. Go verse 9. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and snare, and into many foolish and hurtful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. We fall into it. We, we start getting driven by our wants. Um, and then he talks about the love of money as the root of all evil. We also co covet after they have erred from the faith and they've pierced them through with many sorrows. But thou, O man of God, flee these things and follow after righteousness, godliness, Faith, love, patience, and meekness. Now, notice what he says here. Fight the good fight of faith. Do you realize that you and me have been called into a fight? Now, the fight is not to obtain. God has freely given us all things. The fight is to walk in the knowledge of God. I think that whoever came up with that little bracelet thing that was here, you know, 20 years ago, whatever it was, WWJD, what would Jesus do? I think it was more revelatory and more powerful than what the person even thought. What would Jesus do in the situation that you're in? He wouldn't chase sin. He wouldn't chase the lust of the flesh. He wouldn't chase um, the value of natural things because compared with spiritual things, there is no value. So, the, so to fight the good fight is a fight to stay in the system, the knowledge of God, understanding how God has ordained this thing to be, and to follow after what God has said. If we will follow after what God has said, we can live in everything that he's given to us. Fight the good of fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. Now, I, I've done this in church services before and asked, how many people think you're going to get sick in heaven? Nobody does. Uh, how many people think you're going to be sad in heaven? Nobody does. How many think you're going to be broke in heaven? Nobody does. I mean, you, you go down all these promises of God and people don't struggle knowing that in heaven we're going to have these things. But we've been given them here on earth. 
you and I are going to have to lay hold on those things which are eternal, but they start here in, in, in this natural life. So what is the component? It's a fight because you have an enemy that wants to come kill, steal, and destroy. And you're going to have to fight to not be moved out of this alignment with God, the knowledge of God of what he wants you to do. Your life is not your own. You don't get to choose what you're going to do. Well, I know that went over like a lead balloon because somehow or another we believe we get to choose. Whereunto thou art also called and has professed a good profession before many witnesses. Now we say we're, you know, our profession is we've received Christ into our life, but do you live that way? That that really comes down to the final crux of the matter is do you understand the knowledge of God and are you walking in the knowledge of God? This is a hard thing. I've said it many times. The only I, the only problem I have is David. Why do I have a problem with David? Because David likes to do what David wants to do. And, and to go that route, remember God said his ways, his thoughts uh, are higher than our, our ways and our thoughts. And like the heavens are above the earth, so are his ways and his thoughts above our ways and thoughts. If I'm doing David, I'm living at the low end of the spectrum. I can't do it. I've got to allow myself to be brought up into his knowledge. what? How does he view it? Well, he is love. People say, well, you, you all just love the sinner. Well, yes, we love the sinner, but you, you can't love the sin. You can't endorse the sin. And a lot of the church is going into the endorsement of sin. You have less than 1% of people who, who steal the holy tithe, that which God has said is holy. Uh, because their budget, because you know they 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 bought into a, a misinterpretation of scripture that it's Old Testament. Yes, it it was enacted in the Old Testament, but so was not getting tattooed. Well, we know people don't believe that either, because I'm going to get me a Christian tattoo. There's no such thing. The knowledge of God. What does God say about life? And as long as we do it the way God says. We're going to live in everything that he provided for us. So in 1 John chapter 5, verse 4, it says, For whatsoever is born of God. Now, anybody that's saying that Jesus is their Lord should be born of God. That's the born again experience that we talk about so often. But he says whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world. Here's where, again, most people live according to their culture and not, and not according to God. They don't overcome the world system. Uh, let's look at money. Most people are, are living <coughs> subject to the inflation that's going on. Well, yeah, of course. I can't control whether there's high inflation, low inflation, high interest rates, low interest rates. But there's a system within God that supersedes it, that God has set up, which is apprehended through the knowledge of God. Most people allow whatever sickness is trying to get on them to just get on them. They go get some medicine and do something. They don't overcome what is coming against them. Notice this. Now, now there's a colon right there, which means what we're about to read is explaining or, or further amplifying that whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. This is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Our faith is the victory. Well, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So your faith has to be tied to the word of God. And if it's tied to the word of God, then God's word is above whatever circumstance you're facing. How beautiful is that? But now if I live according to culture and I allow culture to be above the word of God, how am I going to access what God has given to me? I mean, I tell you what, the word of God will overcome any situation. I don't care if you're living in a third world country. If there's no, if it seems like there's no wealth anywhere around you, God has given you all things that pertain to life and godliness. But see, we allow the circumstance of what, what we see, even though first or second Corinthians 418 says, we look not at what we see, uh, but we look at what we can't see. We look at what the word of God, because we, our faith is the substance or the building material of what we desire. We can create the life that we want to live in. I, I tell you what, God's system is so cool. And we really make, mess this thing up. Let's go back to 5, 4, 1 John. What's ever born of God overcometh the world? Watch this. 
And this is the victory. It didn't say, it, it didn't say, um, this is the victory. What is? It, it didn't say it in a, a singular tense like, well, you got one victory to use. Use it wisely. Your faith is the victory that overcometh all things in this world. Every day there's a new problem. Every day there's a new situation. Your faith tied into what God has said is your is your victory of overcoming. But if you believe more in what the culture says, if you believe more in what your problem says, you will never walk in what this is. Now, let, let me close up here with uh, one more verse I found in the book of Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8, verse 32. He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? God has given us all things. He's freely given us all things, but there's a system by which we apprehend all things. Just like it would be illegal for you to walk in a 7-Eleven, go get a big gulp and walk back out and not pay. They have the big gulp for you. They invite you to come in and get the big gulp. But you're going to have to use the system, system of currency. You're going to have to pay for it. Um, you know, there, there, there's a way. There's these, part, these car lots all over town. They got cars, brand new cars just sitting out there. They're like, we want you to come in. We want you to have a car. But there's a system by which you have to get the car. I don't. I, when we get to God, I don't know why we fight. He has a system to obtain things, and that system is called faith. Hey, I call you blessed. I look forward to seeing you next time. Um, stay strong. We'll see you soon.